This is interesting. Zinc has the ability to starve off deadly bacteria. We're talking about streptococcus pneumonia. And this was uh, published in the Journal of Nature Chemical Biology. Now, normally this bacteria, streptococcus pneumonia, lives a part of our friendly bacteria as a normal bacteria. It's not pathogenic unless certain conditions occur, but it lives in our sinuses, it lives in our throat, and it's perfectly friendly until it becomes pathogenic, especially when you're zinc deficient and you're going through stress. So when your immune system is compromised, when you are nutritionally deficient, when you're stressed out, when you have HIV, uh, that's when this microbe flips over to become pathogenic. And this is wild, but this bacteria actually kills a million people a year from pneumonia and meningitis, a million people. And uh, you're gonna find out just with a little bit of zinc, it could be totally prevented, okay? Now, what does zinc do to this bacteria? Well, this bacteria is dependent on another mineral called manganese. Manganese allows for transportation, okay? It's dependent on this little transporter, like a little car. So zinc goes in there and locks up the key so manganese cannot get in there anymore, making this transporter unavailable for this bacteria. Not to mention other things that zinc will do to bacteria, but this is a very powerful one. So it's very, very important that people get enough zinc in their diet. A zinc deficiency is probably one of the top nutritional deficiencies on this planet, primarily because of how much cereal that we consume, because grains have phytic acid that block zinc. So you would wanna avoid things with phytic acid. I put a link down below of a video that I just did on that. Also in the diet to get zinc, you need red meat or shellfish or fish. If you're a vegan, chances are you're gonna be deficient in zinc due to the quantities of phytic acid. Now, if you also have gut inflammation or any type of gut issues, you're gonna have a difficult time absorbing zinc. And so it's just amazing to me of how this trace mineral needed in very trace amounts, very small amounts, can create so much health and can prevent so much destruction. I recently did a video on zinc bioavailability and there's just more to talk about. All right, so 1.1 billion people on this planet are deficient in zinc. So this is an important topic to really cover so people can really understand why, what's behind this. For most people that are deficient in zinc, it is usually because they're not consuming enough zinc from their diet, but there's other reasons why they're deficient as well. And I talk about this in my other video, gut issues, insulin resistance, but also prolonged stress. If you have high levels of stress over a period of time, you're going to be deficient in zinc. And by taking zinc, you can actually lower your cortisol levels. Okay. Then you also have a high carb diet, and that includes the majority of people on this planet. High amounts of carbs and sugar deplete your zinc. Then we have hormone replacement therapy and both estrogen and progesterone can deplete your zinc. And also estrogen dominance can cause you to use up more zinc. When you eat food that has zinc, you're really only absorbing between 20 and 40% of the zinc from food. So if you're consuming oysters, which have a ton of zinc, you're really only absorbing 20 to 40% of the zinc that's in that food. And the same goes with beef and lamb, poultry, cheese, and shrimp. Zinc is absorbed in the middle part of your small intestine. And with certain amounts of zinc, if you're consuming less than 40 milligrams, you're going to get what's called active transport, which means that there has to be some shuttle or carrier that shuttles the zinc from the small intestine to the blood. Okay, it's like a carrier type transport system. But when you go over 40 milligrams, those receptors become saturated. So we no longer have this active transport, we have what's called a passive transport. So if the subway, for example, is jammed up and there's just too many people in the subway, then people start to spill over 
and start walking down the street to get where they need to go. And that's passive transport where there's no carrier and it just kind of spreads out and gets into the blood through other means. And that happens when you consume more than 40 milligrams of zinc. Now, there's certain circumstances where you should be taking higher amounts of zinc, okay? And that's when you have an infection. That's when you have a lot of inflammation. Let's say you have an autoimmune disease or you just have a lot of arthritis, something like that. Or let's say you have gut damage. Those are three scenarios where you should be taking more zinc. And some people take 100, 200, 300. They might start having certain symptoms, zinc toxicity symptoms, okay? Now, these symptoms are not permanent. They don't occur in everyone. And some people need a lot more zinc to penetrate some of these barriers, like a weak immune system, like scar tissue in your intestine, like severe insulin resistance. So they need more, but you should be aware of the symptoms, like feeling nauseated, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramping, headaches, more inflammation, fatigue, lethargy, anemia, a decrease in HDL, an increase in LDL. Realize that some of these symptoms could be coming from a copper deficiency or even an iron deficiency. This is why I always recommend taking zinc within a base of all the trace minerals, but at least taking copper because zinc and copper work together. But realize if you get these symptoms, they're not going to be permanent. All you have to do is cut the amounts that you're taking and these symptoms will go away. Some of the forms of zinc that are better on the gut than others. And by the way, these forms of zinc that I'm going to tell you about, uh, you're really only absorbing between 60 and 80 percent. OK, so it's not 100 percent. So zinc citrate, zinc glycerate, zinc monomethionine, zinc sulfate, zinc biglycinate chelate. Then we have zinc ascorbate, zinc amino acid chelate, zinc gluconate, and zinc acetate. So just wanted to give you some additional data on the absorption of zinc. Stay tuned for more videos. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before